Hi there, I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I offer this devotion as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit and for the soul. It's titled, Happy Birthday. Thank you for your life. Uh, I'm going to begin with a, a few thoughts, actually, on birthdays by Henri Nguyen. He wrote, Birthdays are so important. On our birthdays, we celebrate being alive. On our birthdays, people can say to us, Thank you for being. Birthday presents are signs of our families and friends' joy that we are part of their lives. Little children often look forward to their birthdays for months. Their birthdays are their big days, when they are the centre of attention and all their friends come to celebrate. We should never forget our birthdays or the birthdays of those we are close to. Birthdays keep us childlike. They remind us that what is important is not what we do or accomplish. Not what we have or who we know, but the, the but that we are here and now. On birthdays, let us be grateful for the gift of life. Lovely, eh? Lovely. Last Saturday was one of those very, very busy days in my life. I had lots of things to attend to, and unfortunately it didn't start very well. My car was frozen. It would not start. And I couldn't do anything about it immediately as so I had to open the Hillary Assize for the Altrium Court Leet. I was made a freeman of Altrium a few years ago for services to the community, particularly in the area of mental health and addiction, really. And I serve also as the chaplain to the Court Leet. So I led devotions and I led them that day on impermanence and, un and the uncertainties in life, really, that we can't predict the future. It is unwritten. Now, at the end of the devotion, we shared a time of sil in silence to honour those connected to the court leads and connected to folk who are in the court leads, really. Uh, those that have died in recent times, dating back, really, to the beginning of the pandemic. I knew several of the names personally, two very much close to my heart. One one a very, very dear friend. A very dear friend. As I left, I swallowed hard as I thought of those lost lives and the impact that they had on my life and the lives of so many other people. I then called Breakdown Recovery to get my car going, for I had two birthday celebrations to get to, one in the afternoon and one in the evening. I called ahead to warn that I might be late for the first celebration. About an hour and a half later, the recovery man arrived, took my keys off me, got into my car, put the keys in the ignition, turned the ignition, and it started first time. The car had thawed out by then completely. It had been minus four when I got up that morning, and, and foolishly really, I'd not driven the car for several days which of course you shouldn't do in this this time of year and the car's not been a problem since so hurrah for that <laughs> so after much mirth and laughter at the absurdity of myself and the absurdity of things really just laughing really about the whole situation i quickly got changed and went to the first birthday party i wasn't that late in the end actually it was just really getting going so that was good news it was a, 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 for a dear member of the chapel community in Altrigan, Carolyn Jones. She was celebrating her 18th birthday and all the people that really mattered to her from all the different aspects of her life had been invited along to share in her celebration. Her son Richard gave a wonderful, wonderful telling of the story of her life, her achievements and the, the things that mean the most to her in her life and many many achievements amazing scientists really done incredible research i think she's been i think she's got two phds actually and had hundreds of papers published she's lived quite a life really professionally and, and in other areas too 
and her other passions were, were shared about. She's also overcome a severe form of cancer in recent years. We thought we might lose her at one point. So it was wonderful, it was truly wonderful to share in her celebration. I left after a couple of hours to go home to take Molly out for a walk. Actually, I was feeling a bit guilty as I wasn't spending much time with her that day. I then went out to share a f another friend's birthday meal early in the evening. Now, she is a, a recovery friend and it, it was wonderful to celebrate her life with two very distinct groups of people. One was her family and her long term friends. And the, and the other group was a whole group of others from recovery community, really. It was a wonderful night celebrating her life and of course celebrating a new life that she's embarking on as a second chance, if you like. It has been wonderful watching this woman grow and thrive in recent times. Wonderful to share and enjoy her journey too. I then went home to spend the rest of the evening with Molly, who herself has just had her first half birthday. She recently turned six months old. Now, I didn't need to eat again that evening. I had enjoyed two massive meals and three pieces of cake, birthday cake, two at the second one. And it was very, very nice cake indeed. The cake brought me right back to childhood memories of, of baking with my grandma, really. It's the taste and the texture of the cake, texture of the cake felt almost identical to cakes and buns that she had baked, that we, that I'd kind of helped bake in her kitchen. It was a lovely memory. It brought memories of, of past birthdays to my heart too. Beautiful memories. Birthdays are also important and they should be marked and celebrated. They are truly holy days. They are an opportunity to honour the sacredness of, of our lives. They are opportunities to recognise one another's sacred uniqueness. As, a, as on renewance have delightfully said, pre, as I shared previously, we should never forget our birthdays or the birthdays of those we are clo who are close to us. Birthdays keep us childlike. They remind us that what is important is not what we do or accomplish, not what we have or who we know, but that we are here and now. On birthdays, let us be grateful for the gift of life. We should be. And I'm not always. I, I regret really not celebrating either of my birthdays last year. I wasn't in the mood. And it was wrong of me to do so. Actually, it was it was selfish. For it's not just mine to celebrate. It's there for others to celebrate too. They want to share in the joy of my existence. And I didn't let people do that last year. Please, never let me do that again. Now, some people have two birthdays. Like I said, I didn't celebrate either of mine much last year. I'm not just talking about monarchs here, by the way. Now, folk in recovery also celebrate a, a kind of second birthday. They celebrate their sobriety birthday as well as their what they call belly button birthday. It's a kind of rebirth day, if you like. Mine is the 10th of October 2003. On these days, these, these, new, these other birthdays, people in recovery turn down a different path. They begin their life journey again, if you like. They turn from non-being to living. Forrest Church, my great hero, when, when talking about the beginning of his new life, after finding sobriety himself, wrote the following in the last few months of his life as he was succumbing to, to esophageal cancer. Here in Love and Death, he wrote, taken literally in Hebrew and Greek, as well as Latin, Conversion is not rebirth, but turning. Once converted, we redirect our journey. The American short story writer Raymond Carver turned his life around by a decision to stop drinking. From that point forward, he met life's trials with equanimity and with grace. When dying of brain cancer at the age of 49, 
Carver summed up the nine years of freedom he had enjoyed during what turned out to be the final decade of his life with the same word that leapt to mind when I give daily thanks for a year long reprieve from cancer. Gravy. Gravy. When we see life as the precious gift that it is, when we celebrate our birthday as the truly holy day, we see that everything is indeed gravy. And here's Raymond Carver in his own words in the poem, Gravy. Gravy by Raymond Carver. No other word will do, for that is what it was, gravy. Gravy these last ten, these past ten years. Alive, sober, working, loving and being loved by a good woman. Eleven years ago he was told he had six months to live at the rate that he was going. And he was going nowhere but down. So he changed his ways somehow. He quit drinking and the rest. After that, it was all gravy. Every minute of it, up to and including when he was told about, well, some things that were breaking down and building up inside his head. Don't weep for me, he said to his friends. I'm a lucky man. I've had 10 years longer than I or anyone expected. Pure gravy. And don't forget it. Beautiful, eh? Beautiful. They say we only get one crack at life. This is true to some degree. That said at time, that said we can at times begin again. When all feels lost at times, sometimes it's just the beginning of the end of an old way of being that might lead us down another path, another way of being. We can begin again in love. We can return to love, to turn or to return. That's what converter, conversion means, to turn or to return. We can begin again in love. Any of this. Now this week I conducted the memorial service of one such woman, what they, known as um, Scott's Genie really. I'm not going to give her true full name. But she was someone who lived a life of love and service for the last 37 or almost 37 years. One remembered fondly by those that she helped. She made great use of her life journey and many of her friends wanted to remember this. It's always fascinating really what you learn about a person at their funeral or memorial service. It was wonderful to hear people speak of Jeannie. But it was also good to hear, hear Carolyn's son Richard speak of her life while she was still with us. Something that was not guaranteed not that long ago. It's lovely to hear these stories while people are still here, isn't it? What they do with their lives, who they really were. So as I was reflecting on all this, all these lives that, are, that, are, that have touched my life, both those lost and, and celebrated and those no longer with us, and those with us as well too, those beautiful souls celebrating birthdays. As I was thinking about all this, I was reminded of a poem, which is very popular at funerals these days. It's called The Dash by Linda Ellis. The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates of the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and, follow, and spoke the following date with tears, but he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash, what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. I saw um, some people, some engraving actually on the, 
from outside the Garden of Remembrance here at the chapel the other day of those that have, that have died and have their remains scattered in the garden here on the wall being carved and the dash between those numbers and thinking of those lives, those several lives actually, just this morning, just an hour or so ago. Now I know the dash is a bit of a folksy comic, co poem really, but its message is deep, powerful and meaningful. The dash appears short and quite thin really, but it is deep and it is meaning filled. Matters how we live our lives, what goes on in our lives, how we spend our dash. This brought me back to another extract from the book from uh, Forest Church's masterpiece, Love and Death, My Journey Through the Valley of the Shadow, written while he was dying of esophageal cancer. I shared an extract earlier, you may have noted. In this extract, he asked, knowing that we will die, what should we do? To which he himself answered, we should live, we should laugh, and we should love. And he then recalled a lesson he learned from his children, a lesson about living, a lesson about how this is how we ought to live, I suppose, the, the, the children taught him just by being themselves. One day when they were young, he was walking them to school on a busy New York street. Suddenly a car swerved round a corner and almost killed them all. Forrest was incensed by this, but he remembers. My kids just laughed, <laughs> romping blithely down the street, jumping from tree to tree as they always did, trying to touch the leaves. The kids were celebrating, nay, singing the joy of living. And they had the right idea. Why didn't I think to jump and touch the leaves? I was thinking of this the other day as um, I walk, whenever I go to the small schoolroom from my house with Molly, she always wants to sniff at the wind telephone, but particularly there's a little flower in a flower pot there. Whenever It's just a habit that she does now. Whenever she goes past, she always seems to sniff that flower. Why? Why not? Why not? Forrest believed that it was living loving and laughing that took real courage for they required heart whilst dying didn't really take much courage at all in his eyes that just came naturally don't forget while he was writing this he was ex he, he was experiencing the last months of his own life he knew he was dying as he wrote these words but they were his truth at this time to really live, Forrest suggested a simple little mantra, and it's a good one. Want what you have, do what you can, be who you are. He didn't suggest that this would be easy, but it's the only way to live. And in so doing, he said, we will live in such a way that our lives will prove worth dying for by the love we leave behind. Now there has been so much love celebrated in the lives of those living and those who have died in this last week. I have remembered so many. So many have come into my heart, not just the ones that, I, that were even mentioned. So many lives, so much love, so much laughter. Woke up this morning laughing at my own absurdity yesterday. Nothing serious, just something ridiculous that I, I got irritated about and I woke up this morning laughing at myself. Sometimes that's the best thing. To, sometimes all you can do is laugh. Now, I believe that Forrest uncovered a simple little answer as to how each of us should live. A way to bring deep meaning to the ordinary, ordinariness of our, of our lives, really. This is how we should live to want the things that make up our lives and not wish for something else. And in so doing, we might just to begin to be who we truly are instead of wishing we were someone else. And in so doing, we can do the things that we are then able to do and thus bring deep meaning to that little bit of dash 
that we're living right now. It's all that's required, and you know what? It'll change the world. We change direction. You might inspire someone else to do so. It's not a lot, you know. It's only little tiny things. It comes in the little things. It is the gift of life. The beautiful gift of being alive in this ordinary moment, a moment that can become deep and meaningful, not only for ourselves, but for those that we get to share our lives with. For we never know how long we have got left, how close we are to the end of the line, the last part of that dash. Nor do we know how close those we love are to the end of theirs. At that memorial service that I conducted, I heard of another friend who has been given a very, very bad cancer diagnosis. It does not sound good. But he's facing it with courage as he has faced so many things over the years. And don't forget, courage is about heart. It's all about heart. It comes from our hearts. It allows us to do what we don't think we possibly can. We can live this life we can begin again in love now i'm wondering how do i end this little dash of a service well <laughs> i've offered a little bit of wisdom from that great writer kurt vonnegut that he wrote almost at the end of his life so here's a little bit of wisdom you may find it profound you may find it amusing hopefully you find it a bit of both really you might think it's ridiculous i hope not I thought he spoke to me anyway. So in 2006, a high school English teacher asked students to write to, write to famous authors and ask for advice. Kurt Vonnegut was the only one to respond. Here is his response. I think it's magnificent. Make up your own minds, I guess. So he wrote, Dear Xavier High School and Ms Lockwood and Mrs Perrin, McFeely, Batten, Moore and Conguista, I thank you for your friendly letters. You sure know how to cheer up a really old teaser, 84, in his sunset years. I don't make public appearances anymore because I now resemble nothing so much as an iguana. What I had to say to you, moreover, would not take long to wit. Practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage. No matter how well or badly, not to get money and fame, but to experience becoming, to find out what's inside you, to make your soul grow. Seriously, I mean starting right now. Do art and do it for the rest of your lives. Draw a funny or a nice picture of Miss Lockwood and give it to her. Dance home after school and sing in the shower and on and on. Make a face in your mashed potatoes. Pretend you are Count Dracula. Dracula. Here's an assignment for tonight. And I hope Ms Lockwood will flunk you if you don't do it. Write a six line poem about anything but rhymed no fair tennis without a net make it as good as you possibly can but don't tell anybody what you're doing don't show it or recite it to anybody not even your girlfriend or parents or whatever or Ms Lockwood Okay, okay. Tear it up into teeny weeny pieces and discard them into widely separated trash receptacles. You will find that you have already been gloriously rewarded for your poem. 
you have experienced becoming, learned a lot more about what's inside you, and you have made your soul grow. God bless you all. Kurt Vonnegut. Marvellous, isn't it? So let's go live our lives. It's the ultimate, the ultimate free gift. The ultimate, ultimate grace. It's gravy. Go whatever time we have got left. But let's do it in style. Let's do it in style. And if you can, make it rhyme. But do it just to bring your soul alive. Amen. So I'm going to end this devotion with some final words of blessing. You know, we all need to bless more. There's not enough blessing going on in this world. And you know what? We can all bless. We bless when we give ourselves wholeheartedly to life. But here's a blessing. For the sun and the dawn, which we did not create. For the moon and the evening, which we did not make. For the food which we plant but cannot grow, we lift up our hearts in thanks this day. And may we know God's blessings as we live each day, and may we carry these blessings with us, and may we do so in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do, go in joy, go in love, go in peace. Amen.